Hey, hey, welcome to Modern Art Blitz. I'm your host, uh, Matt Gleason. We do this every Sunday. We, because I have my lovely co-host, Lisa Derrick. And uh, we're live at five streaming on dronebox.com. And of course, we're archived on YouTube. I don't know if we've broken down the number of viewers who watch us streaming live and the number of viewers who watch us archived on YouTube. And on our website. And on our website, modernartblitz.com. So we had a really fun time last night in Chinatown. Chinatown's rocking, yeah. China, I, there were, what, six openings, five? Six art openings and um, Memorial Day weekend, 2016. Uh, we, had, we had great crowds. Uh, the show at my gallery, Coagula Curatorial, is uh, Jill uh, Emery, New Paintings. Uh, we did really well with it, and uh, good, good, good vibe. Uh, you know, good sales. Everything was great. Good people. Yeah. You know, what I love is that Jill is a rock star. From she was one of the founding members of Hole. She was in Mazzy Star. She was in Two Damascus, and, and the super heroines. And super heroines. Yeah. And she transitioned to being a fine artist. And, and I mean, you know, as history has shown, not everyone survives a relationship with Courtney Love. So. <laughs> <laughs> So that alone, might, might, yeah. in addition to some great paintings, that could be her big, uh, big accomplishment. But yeah, it was a, she's a great painter, and, and uh, Tulsa Kinney uh, put the show together for us, so, uh, so that was great. And uh, yeah, yeah, and Chinatown's rocking. I mean, uh, you know, downtown, I think the whole thing in, in L.A. is tilting. I'm, you know, five years from now, maybe the west side will be a ghetto. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? You mean go back to being a ghetto? Go back I, to being a ghetto. I grew up in Santa Monica Canyon as yeah. a kid, and man, it was beat down there. Well, well, we had hippies. Well, we my, hippies. my parents are from Santa Monica in the 30s. Oh. And let me tell you, like, uh, my mom went to Santa Monica High, and she lived in the Palisades. My dad went to, to uh, my, my mom went to St. Monica's. My dad went to Saint, Santa Monica High. And, um, and it was like, you know, there was a, a oh, ghetto. Yeah, it was, was a, yeah, it was yeah. a, ghetto, a legitimate Street, uh, Yiddish ghetto. Third Street Promenade, and like, was not what it was. No, no, Man, no, no, When no, J.J. Things. Newberry's is the happening store, like, that was the classiest store. That's, well, yeah, the, yeah let me tell you about uh, some of the, some of the things my father told me, I wouldn't repeat. They are just so, they're like from a long lost time. My grandmother, they, they gave her a house near the beach, which was a slum at the time, because they were redeveloping their house in Ocean Park. Mm -hmm. The city of Santa Monica gives her the, the houses now worth six and a half million dollars. My, my, my uh, cousin uh, definitely uh, won the lottery on that one. But um, they gave him this house and it was by the beach. And my grandmother, in the 1970s, I was a little kid and she tells me, Oh, living by the beach is not a good thing. And I'm like, why not? You're living by the beach. He's like, well, you know, if you look at all the big cities, they're away from the beach. And she was right. And I said, oh, and I go, why do you think that is? They're near a port or near a beach, but the big center of the city is always miles away. And she pointed this out to me. And I was a little kid. And living by the beach is not a good thing. And I said, why, Grandma? Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> So there you have it. Oh my God. So Think about it. So that's, I mean, these things are built this way for a reason. Yeah. So the, the ravening hordes of pirates would come we don't, in and- We don't have them now, but in, give it five years when everybody cool is downtown, maybe the pirates are going to Santa Monica. Forget the Caribbean. <laughs> oh, bad. So um, we, have, we have with us on the set, it's not just Lisa and I here on the set today. We have, um, uh, on, uh, to, to my left and on the right of your screen is our, Sketcher's seat. We have an artist in the Sketcher's seat every week, and we have our intern. Where you're an intern from? What school? You don't have a microphone, but Cal State Long Beach. Cal State Long Beach. This is Aliza, our intern, and she's in the Sketcher's seat, and she's going to be sketching both of our guests later in the show today. Will be artist Tim Gratowski, but right now, our guest, 
is an artist and a rock star. Legitimately so. Welcome, Leifer Sayer. Leah Farsayer. Leah Farsayer. I almost had it, man. <laughs> it's all, I, I was that close. Mateo Pendejo. Mateo, Mateo, tan, tan, tan duro. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction, so, Mateo. Yeah, so, so, so you are an artist, and we're, we have your art here. And um, I would, now I'm looking at your art. I'm an art, uh, you know, I'm a published art critic. I, I, I can just say off the top of my head, this looks like uh, there's certainly some influence of Catholicism and the occult in your art. Do you do you see themes of this running through your art? Yes, of course, and my music also. I mean, Catholicism <clears throat> is my upbringing, and that's really my first introduction to art. You know, just going to church and whatnot. All the paintings on the new and all the, the, the same sculptures. Thing, yeah. Yes, and um, from there, you know, it just intrigued my interest, and that's really my my first introduction into the art world was. Going to church, seeing going the saints church. and, yes. the, and, the, and the, uh, the passion of the Christ around the, yeah. all, the, each sign of the cross and all that. Um, so so what, what is this artwork here? This is a, it's a decoupage piece that it incorporates both, you know, um, good and bad, and, which is a, a theme throughout everything that I do. It's just it's that dance between the light and, and the darkness. And, and this painting portrays that. This, What's the title of this painting? Do you, do you recall? I don't, I don't think this one has a oh, you title. Just, you, don't buy, you know, un, untitled is safer. Yeah, some, some do. Some, some I do, you know, give them a title and some I don't. And um, so when you say decoupage, I mean, in, in a way, that's kind of a lost art. I mean, there's, uh, there's dozens and dozens of collage artists. It's, it's you know, but, but decoupage, there's a whole manner to that. I mean, there's, there's a way you, when you're decoupaging, you have to do it a certain way, right? Agreed. I, I've been, you know, I'm self-taught. So a lot of the things that I do really is just about capturing moments and certain things, um, I've developed certain techniques and skills in order to, to help me communicate what I'm trying to do um, with, you know, for, let me see, how can I put this? So sometimes I'll, feel an emotion and sometimes writing a song is the fastest way for me to communicate that sometimes decoupaging allows me to do that and sometimes there's something that i need to kind of understand deeper and i'll use painting okay to do so okay so pain so so for your in your process decoupaging is a quicker it is, is quicker and writing is. a song is the quickest is that a more immediate yes. thing In, yes and, and so your music has maybe an immediacy that the that your that your um that your artworks your fine art doesn't necessarily it's a little more uh, thought out you think yeah you can say that yeah. definitely i mean it's all about communication with with my subconscious mind is what i'm doing it's all art um whatever form right a painting um writing music, even to the way that I dress. It's all just about um, self-awareness, self-communication, and, and self-exploration. Now, now um, Lisa curated you into a show at, um, Lisa Derrick here, big, big time curator. Yes. Is, uh, she curated you into the show, uh, uh, Two Johns and a oh, Whore, at, at uh, Coagula Curatorial, yes. my gallery. Um, and it's been, it's been like a year and a half now, but um, did Jesus. you, did, did, now as a curator, you know, how did you look at the work relative to the sophistication of using these, these, the, the, what you would call the traditional imagery, but also having like, you know, taking it out of the context that it's meant for and being used as a metaphor for other things? Well, the, um, Leah Farr brought up two pieces for me. There were sculptures. And one was the piece that we showed, which is further on. And the other one was, um, and it was called Magdalene's Temple. And that's the piece that I ended up showing. It's a very tall sculpture. And I liked the juxtaposition of the Catholic saints with, there was a David Bowie on the thigh. And it was this woman standing, The man, it's a mannequin. And she had very, she was on her tiptoes and there was black paint dripping down. And it just was so graphically different from the other artwork, yet tied into John Roker's themes of Catholicism and um, self-discovery through breaking taboos about religion and the idea of prostitution and also because Leofar is a performer, it linked into John Fleck's performance art. So it kind of worked. And his band Prayers had just released their first video and they had released their, al their first album 
SD kill wave as, um, as an electronic download. So I thought it was a great mixture of, of um, just the, the dichotomy of Catholicism and rock and roll, and that's really what John Roker does as well. So. What, what, uh, when your band uh, was first releasing the albums, did you look at it as, as like, um, this, this might happen, or are you so driven that it's just so much a part of you that it's inevitable that it would happen? I knew it was gonna happen um, just because I am a music lover, first of all, an art lover, and um, <clears throat> I have great taste, and it's because of it that I knew it was going to happen. Let's, let's look at the next artwork, if we, if we can switch the, uh, switch the artworks here. This what? is, uh, what does this say on it? Time makes love pass. Wow. And this is something that I'm using really in order to just um, continue to explore uh, my subconscious mind. So it's really not even thought out what I'm doing here. It's just me kind of freestyling. So, so uh, is this, and this is a straight painting, correct? Yes. Yeah, so this is still in the works. It's not finished, as you can oh, wow. see on her on her shoulder. Okay. One of the stars is still being worked okay. on. So okay. this is probably. So this is really indicative of your process. So you're the the, the way you're layering things. Yes. Wow. I'm still gonna add the glitter that I'm kind of. I don't want to say I'm known for, it, but it's something that I enjoy if, doing. If, if, if it's a medium that you work at and you get known yeah. for it, I mean that's yeah. you know. Your glitter work is really like I still can't figure out how you do it. Like it's, it's amazing. Don't, don't reveal secrets. Yeah, yeah don't, <laughs> I don't even know how I do it. I Every just, artist is um, taking notes. Okay, how does yeah. he do the glitter? Okay, oh, and then he does, oh, yeah. great, uh, You know, great. there's been many that have, um, you know, I'm from San Diego, California, and there's many artists down there that um, <sighs> copy my work. <laughs> and I've seen a few now that have been introducing the glitter technique that, uh -oh. in, into their work, but it's not the same. No, nope, they, they haven't figured it out. They haven't figured it out. Let, let's see. Let's see your next. Uh, what we got? We got a and and um. Oh, here. Let Let's see the whole piece. Oh, wow. So now most people would know this is Alistair Crowley, correct? Correct. And 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 Crowley. What, Crowley. 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 There's a W. No, Crowley. Those who call me Crowley hold me holy. Those who call me Crowley hold me foully. Okay, so it's Crowley. And, uh, <laughs> there you go. Boy, that was the easiest joke of it. I, I haven't had an I easier. I saw that one come out. The, the truck and the headlights. <laughs> so, so tell tell us about this piece if we can get a, if we can get the whole look at it here. You know, this is an homage to Crowley because he's in in so many ways has shaped me. And um, actually, this the the black is actually all black glitter. Oh, wow. And, and this is a combination of decoupaging and painting and glitter. Wow. So... How uh, large is this piece? This piece is like four feet. Oh, wow. So, so it's, a, it's a big size panel? Yes. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. And um, where, now, I, I mean, where have you shown your art around? Oh, and I mean, all... I mean, it, is it for like, you, would you do an album cover of your art? Or, or does the I record label you know, not let no, you? No, I mean, we run our, we're independent. We run everything, the aesthetic of what Prayers is, everything down to, you know, um, our album covers or to the music videos that I produce. They're, they're, we have a, a, a tight grip on. Oh, okay, so and, you're, you're and, okay. Yeah, so, Nobody from the record, that classic thing of the, like, No, no, they're, the record, the record label, label is not in control no, of our no. image. No, not at all. No. Never, I would never allow that because okay. it wouldn't be true to what we're doing. And um, for me, it's very, very important to be in control of our image, our aesthetic, um, our message. And really, that's what, what defines us and what has separated us and what has given, them, given us the strong foundation that we have is because it, 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 it is our essence that you are able to um, be in contact with. So if I'm, if I'm listening to a prayers album, there's been no interference. It's there's weird. no er right. interference. Can we get, let's, let's look at the next artwork and um, see, what, see what pops up after Mr. Cr oh, oh, there it is. is. This is the artwork we're talking simple. about. This was at Coagula Curatorial in January of 2015. 14. Curate, 2014, geez, time flies. Um, uh, Lisa curated the show, Two Johns and a Whore, and it was a group show about prostitution in between two solo shows. And so, and uh, what was the title of this piece again? Magdalene's Temple. Magdalene's Temple. That's a very Catholic artwork, regardless. The whole idea of the, you know, the, the body. The body. You know, one day we'll be reunited, body and soul, in the great beyond, uh, supposedly, if you believe, if, 
if you believe that. Okay, so, um, and, and, uh, and this is a mannequin size uh, tall. Okay, great, great, great. Wow, that's an well, there's amazing Well, there is Magdalene's temple right yeah. there. Yeah, so, well, there's the temple. <laughs> so, uh, I don't... The rose-scented uh, garden. Yeah, I feel like I should, I should be uh, bowing down. Jenny Fleck, if you want to learn how to pray better, get on your knees, boy. You <laughs> oh, well, I, I believe that was the first U2 quote ever on our show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hopefully it will be well, the, the last. last. Yes. Well, you're going to quote one line. So, okay, so one. your band Prayers played Coachella, correct? We did. We so, played Coachella so, this year. Now, explain the process. Like, one day the phone rings. Hi, this is Mr. Coachella. I'd love to have you come down to the farm. Is, I mean, how, do, how does that happen? Yes, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I mean, when, when I mean... When you're hot stuff, you know, I mean, <laughs> people pay attention, people notice. And, uh, you know, my partner, Dave Parlay and myself, we're, we're the talk of the town right now. And um, it makes sense that people are listening. And I mean, we have our booking agent, we have our management, and their job is to, you know, talk about us and let people know that we're here and, and that we're doing things that are worth uh, paying attention to. So those that are tastemakers and those that are involved in the music industry, know who we are for many many reasons um and, and it's not just because of our looks it's because of what we're doing because what we're doing is very important and um they reached out to us of course they reached out to our booking agent and said hey we would love prayers to play coachella they offered a number and we said uh we need more and then they came back with a different number and we liked that and we said okay we will play your festival so so uh, great you got paid to play you got paid to play coachella yeah. You, so, so do they do they fly you in? Do you have to drive there yourself? What's what's the story? Yeah, we drove ourselves there, and um, that's usually how it works. I mean, certain festivals will take care of, of uh, you know, I'm thinking flights like and, no helicopters or VIP I'm sure jets. there's yeah, I'm sure there's certain artists that get get that treatment. Um, us, you know, we live in California, so we just drove up. So you're nearby. Did, yeah, you, get a, nearby. did you at least get a deli tray in the green room? We got so much. I oh, mean, yeah? Okay. The, one thing about Coachella, I must say, and Golden Voice, is that they're amazing with what they do with their artists and, and the way that they treat them. And it's been nothing but red carpet for us. And Coachella did an amazing job with us and with everyone else. I mean, they offer so many platforms. I mean, when we performed, because of it, we got so many write-ups on so many great magazines and and um, because of it, uh, you know, we've continued to um, be able to do what we're doing because it opens up doors. So it's it's a great great promotion. To, it to, is. To it really is. They, oh, here's here's some here's some, are these pictures of, of uh, from your video? These are for music videos that I've directed. Wow. So and and now you consider a rock video to be as much of an art form as a painting, drawing. Sculpture? Yes, of course. That's why. Yes, yes, definitely. Definitely, there is art and um, in film. Do do you do you prefer to be a live performer or a studio performer? No, no live. I, I thrive in, yeah. in that environment. The, the, yeah. the bigger the crowd, I mean, was the crowd yeah. at Coachella too big? Or Not prefer, big enough. Do you prefer a small club? You'd rather have a stadium. Stadium is of yes. Wow. Stadium is my preference. <laughs> <laughs> So and and you're and you're and you so so you're not going to be playing sports to play at the stadium. You're going to have to be doing rock and roll, right? Correct. Do I yeah. call it rock and roll? Do you call it rock and roll? Is that a proper term? You know, they they are saying that we are the new rock and rollers, but we're not. We're electronic musicians. You know, we we ride the wave, which is like we um, keep the torch lit for electronic bands that always have you know created genres like chill wave, new wave, dark wave. And we're Kill Wave. So, so who is uh, who's your biggest influence musically? Uh, Christian Death. Oh yeah, okay. That's a, that's a good Orange County band. Yeah, from, from Christian Death, yeah. Death, yeah. Death Rock Band. Um, you know, I love Bauhaus, um, Joy Shop Division, Boys. the Pet Shop Boys. Um, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. But right now, my favorite band is Prayers. <laughs> <laughs> but this is great because you guys covered West End Girls by the Pet Shop Boys, and you ended up. Writing the, per, writing the treatment and producing the music video along with my friend Gavin Filipak for um, the Pet Shop Boys' new single, 20-something. So you got to actually end up working, running the video for somebody who was a big influence on you. Yes, yes. Wow. That was How great. was that? That was good? It, it was wonderful. You know, I was able to um, showcase 
my environment and, and my interaction with the world and how I see it through someone else's music. And usually I use my music to interact with the world and, and those in it. So it was great to be able to do that with someone else's song. So did the Pet Shop Boys, did, did they have any pets? I haven't met them in person. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you just got to do it. <laughs> it's all been through email. Oh, okay, you know, okay. Yeah. They don't say, hey, they don't have dog. I'm thinking dog or cat. You know, it's usually dog or cat, not dog and cat. I don't remember the story but I, uh, regarding their name, but I know it's out there. And it it's has, out there. It there's, has, there's, we could go, you could Google the origin yeah. of the name. I'm just curious what pets the Pet Shop Boys might have. I don't oh. think they even own pets. That's the, the thing. I think they're like allergic to animals. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is... Well, you know, what are we looking at here? Oh, this is a uh, still from um, Ready to Bleed. It's our second uh, music video that I directed. Cool. Off of our um, album, SD Kill Wave. And, and what first... kind of equipment are you making um, videos with? Are you using film and tr transfer to video? You use no, high-end no, video cameras? No, no, high-end video camera. We use the RED. Oh, the RED. Okay, that's, yeah. that's still the state of the art, right? That's as, that's as good as you can get. That's go, as right? good as it gets, okay. man. We don't cut corners. Okay. So this, is, you actually had the candles on your shoulders yes. melting. Yes. And... Wow. Yeah, and I actually got a, a third-degree burn from that. Oh, my God. still there, and it's in my shoulder. I don't know if we can Perfect. show it. Well, let's see where it is. <laughs> Yikes. Ouch! Yeah, oh my God, you get some, we got some spots it. there. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. if the camera wow. can see it, but yeah, yeah. I wow. did damage to my shoulders of, during the filming of, of that. But you did it for your art, right? I did it for my art. I will bleed for it, and I really, you know, I really am what you see and what you hear. And I've been this all my life. I am this artist that really is just about pushing boundaries and through it, you know. And that's, you know, that's where. Crowley comes in, you know, because he pushed so many boundaries and he that's how I had identify myself so much with him because because of it, because I've been doing it for so long, so long. I've been pushing boundaries where where, you know, I've been alienated from my community because I push these boundaries where people at, at times feel threatened by me because, you know, I speak the truth and sometimes the truth, you know, can cause people to run for the hills. People don't want, people would rather hear a pretty lie than the awful truth. Every, nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100. So, so I'm curious about your tattoos. I have to ask, yeah, because I'm sure people watching this video are interested. What was your first tattoo? My first tattoo was on my back and now it's covered up with a Virgen de Guadalupe. Um, <clears throat> but it was Sherman, it's the gang that, I'm, that I belong to, that I'm a, a part of. And it's Sherman Grand Hills Park. So I had a Sherman across my back, uh, where, and where, old English. Uh, where, where is Sherman? Uh, Sherman is, is in San Diego, California. Oh, so you're, you're from San Diego? I'm from San Diego, California. Oh, okay, cool, cool. And so, uh, so what's your most, what is your most recent tattoo? What is my most recent tattoo? Um, the, you know, I've been touching up the, my head. Oh, okay. Yeah, my head, I've been touching it up. So they're not recent. They're, I'm just like... You know, I, I, now I'm seeing the eye of Horus twice. You got a big eye of Horus on the side yeah, of your head. Yeah, they're for protection. And then you got the an eye of Horus protection. below. Yeah, wow. yeah okay, and battle. Arc. All right. Yeah. So you're mixing a lot of, a lot of um, occult, occult imagery here with Catholicism and everything. All there. It's all for me. It's all about powerful images and uh, powerful amulets and um, sigils. And for me, like you know, it's so so beautiful for me the power that these that we have given these images. And the things that um, come with it, 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 for me, they represent power and strength and so many things in a way where I, I've seen people, I'm gonna share this story with you. When I first got my tetragrammon on my throat, which uh, another name for it is a swastika. When I had the swastika t tattooed on my throat, so many things occurred because of it. One day I'm crossing down the street and an African-American gentleman spits in my face and we go to blows. A, a second time, a group of Buddhist monks are walking by me and they all bow down to me because of this. So the power of it does so much. I mean, there's people that are, they think I'm a Mexican Nazi and then the, 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 the you know, white Nazis get infuriated by me because I have it and they feel it belongs to them. 
and and that's the power be, be and it's behind. actually in the different direction than the correct than the, than the, uh, than the it's Nazis. the right it's direction it's the, the buddhist direction the hexagram in the center which could be perceived as a star of david or as the yantra yes thing. and a lot of the, these people aren't educated right so and sometimes if i have the time i will educate them on the meaning of it if i don't have the time I'll allow, them, I'll allow them to continue thinking what they want to about me or my tattoos. But they're all social experiments. <laughs> Tattooing is a social experiment. But what about art? Is art a social experiment? Yes, of course. Okay. It's many things. Do we have another one up here? Is it, what's the next image? Before we were... That was it. Oh. Those are all the oh. images. That's Those it. are all the images. Wow. We had we had to chew. We had to, we had our uh, our photo editor uh, Abel Alejandre uh, chose uh, chose these images and from these a new, from a neutral position these seem to be the most powerful images. It's very interesting uh, a very interesting mix because it's like yourself. You have the art and you have the music, the performance part of the uh, is is the, now can music exist in the year. 2016 without a video to support it. I mean, do, do you, do you yes. need that visual element though? Does I mean, it help? I or? need it because it's who I am and that's just what I do. But there's a lot of successful bands like that I love, like Cold Cave, right? They, they don't have, he doesn't have music videos. He'll just put up a picture on his YouTube channel and his song and his, you know, his channel has millions of views because the song is amazing. I'm, you know, I'm just a different type of artist. I, I love to, um, paint with words, paint with paint, and paint with film. So be before we uh, conclude, we have to show you the sketch that was made of you. Oh. While you were a guest from the sketcher's seat, this is our, our intern, Eliza, and we've got- a, That is amazing, thank right, you so, so much. This is Hold it up to the camera. That. Wow, not bad, not bad. that is all great. Right. Not bad at all. The sketcher's seat triumphs again. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, intern Eliza. And thank you, Leofar. Thank you, Matt. All right. Thank, thank you, Lisa. Leofar Sayer, you can get prayers. Where is, is there a website for prayers? Yeah, it's just prayers. Prayers, is prayers.com? No, the prayers. Cholo oh, cho oh. Cholo-goth.com. Cholo-goth.com. And, and on Facebook is prayers. Prayers on Facebook. And on Instagram is fi as prayers. Just prayers on, you got at prayers? That's on, right. Wow. Wow, yes. you, you, jumped, you jumped ahead of a lot of... Uh, Religious well, no, groups. Yeah, you know, you know what it is, is that we have the right team. And when you have the right team, you can move mountains, you can, you can part seas. Great. All right. Well, thanks for Thank being you, on Matt. Modern Art Blitz. My pleasure. Oop. Oh, you got to take your microphone. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I felt like we were, we were at Coachella there. I know. I, know. Was, I was like, I got I to... I get the rock star glory with me now. <laughs> Woo! All right. Well, we've got some more art glory coming up. We got some art glory coming up, and I uh, I want to say that our next guest is uh, kind of uh, the rock star of Culver City, the Culver City art world, or whereabouts of Southern California. But you've certainly um, seen him and his art around. So I want to introduce our next guest, Tim Grotowski. Grat, hurry, hurry. Gratkowski, Gratkowski. Nice. What? 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 Can say just, your last name. Gratkowski. Gratkowski. Right. Yeah. And I can just call you Tim, though, right? Because I have like tangled tongue. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, so, so now here, here's an interesting thing. Tim, you spell your first name T M. Do you? Is that? Is that how it was spelled? For you, have you chosen to spell it that way? At some point, I chose to spell you it. That you, way. you got rid of the I. You took the I, got, I out of Tim. Just you know, as a very kind of. There's uh, no I in Tim. Yeah. There's more kind of more a, efficient that way. <laughs> there's kind of a. The, the, so is your signature like a T and an M now? Yeah, my signature is crazy. It's not even my last name. It's just some crazy line that shows up on <laughs> paper. Well, it yeah. is. A, it is a handful to scroll out. Though. Yeah. So, it is. so yeah, um, to say. <laughs> now you've been you've been in Southern California for quite a while, but you're a native of Chicago. I am. I was born there. How long have you been in Southern California? Um, I came here originally in '93. Northridge earthquake. You you came here for the quake. For the quake. I heard came about it quake, three days after the... the quake happened, and boom, you know. Wow. It was a great. Welcome. You literally came three. I mean, it was, it was yeah. January of '94. Yeah. January '94, the quake happens on a Monday, and you're here on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you already had planned to be here, though. You oh, didn't come out no, to like you no, were no, you no, didn't come out no, here to help us all. No, no. Like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> go to the the earthquake plagued county of Los Angeles and help the natives. No, no, I had, no, no. You came no, out because no you figured you could like get that. cheap rent because of the earthquake. 
Probably. <laughs> like something, something's going to break. You know. Well, we're glad to have. We're glad thanks, the earthquake. Took so you've been at her. Out yeah, here. you've been at her twenty twenty two years now. Um, on and off, I, I left several times. Oh, really? In the whole process. You know, and some a back, lot you know. of people leave and never come back. What did did you leave swearing you would never come back? Um, no, I just uh, I guess home and other things kind of called my attention. Ah, uh, okay. And I felt like. Um, I wanted to go explore that and like LA wasn't completely everything I thought it was at the time, but eventually it wound up, I now call it home. It's home. LA, you're an Angelino. I am an Angelino. I, I love it here. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. So tell us about your art. I, I, you're, you're most known for these, um, I want to say collage, but correct me if I'm wrong. How do you describe? I think collage is a good segue into it. You know, yeah. Most people understand it, they get it right away. You know, I mean, I get into other ways of describing it. I mean, I think personally for myself and my background in painting and drawing that I think I paint and draw with paper. So that's- You paint and draw with paper. Okay, so can, let's see the next image. Um, and uh, now this you're incorporating, obviously you're, doing, you're, you're painting and drawing, but you're actually forming this word ugly. Yes. Wow. So, so what, what inspired, uh, what, well, I'm, I don't even want to ask about the inspiration. You've, you've got a signature style that you've arrived at, your mature style, with this painting and drawing with I these think so. paper elements. I think so. I don't, know, I don't know if it's so much mature as that. It's, it's an ongoing process. Like, I never, I never stop and say, Did I hey, inadvertently call you a senior citizen? I didn't mean to. I no, mean, you're, you're still in your you? 40s, right? Did you? I Are think you I'm in, in my 20s. I, <laughs> but I like the linear aspects that you work with. Within, you're very, like, linear. What, and it's what's up with the vertical? Um, I, I, horizontal I think here. it's a it's a organizational kind of uh, tactic, you know. Do you think it's because in Chicago you have way more skyscrapers than we I do? I don't. I don't think you know. Okay. Mo <laughs> most of this, and I wasn't um, always a collage artist. You know, I, I uh, eventually got rid of most of the other materials I use. A lot of mixed media stuff mm -hmm. originally, and eventually, as I got rid of that, I realized I could achieve everything with just paper. You know, uh -huh. so I didn't have to use paints or inks or anything else. And I think it's just one of the ways, you know, that I probably most so when I when I left home and started migrating and exploring the world, like a, that process happened at that time. By the time I was in Los Angeles, I was interested in collage. Like some of those materials started going away, but it was at some point where I made a commitment to just focus my career on the art that I just went. All paper. Why? Yeah. Why ugly? Why does this piece say ugly? It's part of a, a, a series, three pieces that I did um, for my solo show at Walter Maciel, um, September 2012, uh, and it was the whole series of these three was good, bad, and the ugly. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So, and they're they're about eight and a half feet by eight and a half. Wow. Feet, you know? Wow. 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 Yeah. And how's how's working with Walter Maciel? It's great. I couldn't be happier. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's a lot of fun. And know? and how many shows have you had with him now? Uh, my second will be this September. Oh, so okay. So September so it's 2016. Like a four year cycle. Okay. Exactly. Two year cycle. Twelve. You said 2012. Oh, did I say twelve? And now it's 2016. Was it 2014? No, it's it's 14. Yeah, oh, okay. So you had a solo mistake. show with my Walter mistake. in 2014. Exactly. Yeah. And you're gonna have another show with him in. And wow, ooh, look at all this behind us. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's whoa, going on here? Make us go away. Wow. This is a, this is a piece I did, a uh, residency, oddly enough, in 2012. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> I knew you did something that year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, I was trying to think of what to do for the residency. And um, so I, I get into math and numbers and sciences, and I try to pick things apart and, you know, kind of create systems to work within or, or certain restraints, you know, to work against things to come up with new art projects. And when I was looking at it, the, the residency started at like 12 o'clock on one Saturday, and a month later was the opening reception. And so it wound up being 678 hours. So I did 678 collages in 678 hours. Wow. Wow. Woo. Did yeah. you have a timer? Like, oh, damn, no, I can't finish no, it. No, no, no. But it was, it was. Uh, I have to move on to the next one. And I really wanted to put this if piece tr of paper If right truth there. be told, there wasn't that hour, but it was like uh, running a marathon. Okay. You, you, mm -hmm. you pace yourself and you have, to, you have to get to the finish line. Were you working on multiple ones at one time? No, I was always working on one. So I, okay. I did one, I finished it, but there would be a, a sequence of like, a, in some days at the residency I worked there, you know, in an AR day, I could make, I could make eight. I could also make 16. Ah, you know? okay. So okay. out of, and part of the piece became, That's you called know, cheating, by the way. It is. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, but you get that from cheating. You can't <laughs> complain. So, so, so um, now did you have music playing and each, each day the music got faster? No, yeah. but you know, I, I think I got faster. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Well, that's, yeah. Yeah. You got to finish the race. It's the perception. You know? yeah. Okay. 
But there, you know, you have to factor in eating and drive time and sleeping oh, yeah. and everything else. So, do you consider yeah. yourself to be an abstract artist? I think so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at some point, you're you're part of the great pantheon of abstraction. And and who are the most influential abstract artists relative? I want to say first to to your endeavors, but also maybe your view of it historically. Um, it's a good question, and and I always kind of struggle with it because I don't like. Um, I like to push my own goals and myself, almost like an athlete. You, you try to better yourself and yeah. better condition yourself and, you know, improve on what you do. And I don't, I mean, quite frankly and honestly, I don't look at a lot of other others for inspirations. Historically, however, there's always been, you know, in, in our canon, these great moments that you can't ignore, you can't deny. You know, I think Warhol would be one of them, you know. I think Cy Twombly comes in as a factor. I think without a doubt, you can't not use Rauschenberg as a reference, and he is is a big fan and a big hero of mine, but you know, I try to. He's a big fan of yours, or you're a big. I'm fan a big of fan his, of his. And yeah. He's a hero to you. I know. Yeah, yeah. Either he way, said, it works. He's a big Either fan. Of my, wow, that's wow. <laughs> good. Uh, hey, man. Because <laughs> I saw, I saw, I saw Robert Rauschenberg one time in in person, and um, he was very old, and he looked he looked like Mike Wallace from 60 oh, Minutes, yeah. like uh, the withered old Mike. But with well, not the, the dyed hair. Yeah. No. No. But just the. It, it was like. It was like. I don't want to remember Robert Rauschenberg, and he was in a wheelchair. He's like, and he looked like Mike Wallace from 60 Minutes. I expected him to go, I am accusing you of doing this corruption. You know, I was, I was waiting. Is this for at that. the Mocha opening? No, it wasn't at Mocha. It, oh no, actually, I saw him at that Mocha. He was actually a little better at that one. This was this he was, was also actually, in the wheelchair. Though. Yeah, he was this in a wheelchair. Was right after the yeah, this know. was this was after the Mocha opening. This was at another reception. But I saw him at the Mocha opening, and and um, somebody came up to him. Oh my God! I just I haven't even thought of this since it happened. I think this was in. I want to say this was like 2002. Is, it, is that about the time of the? It seems about right. Yeah, sometime yeah. it was. It was part of last decade, the beginning. And 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 Rauschenberg was there, and I was by him, and he looked. I mean, he was, you know, and somebody walked up to him, and they go, "Is Jasper Johns going to be here?" <laughs> like so, and you're like, oh, 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 oh. And, and he just he just kind of went, "No, is he here?" He was kind of had fun, he kind of had fun with it, but it was like. How like, you know uh, you want to just strong us a little? Do they um, not know that history? <laughs> no, exactly. It's like, but but to be associated with somebody, yeah, and then you're not really. Oh boy. Yeah. So so this is a close up of the of these 678. Pieces. Yeah, just to give you an idea, Whoa. you know. And so okay. it, they're actually on, uh, in this case, three and a half inch by three and a half inch blocks. Wow. Now. That is also made in the process of making the whole piece. Now is this piece like in storage now, or is this somewhere? Is it is. Somewhere? It's actually in eleven like legal boxes. It's in, yeah. it's in some, so so it packed up pretty pretty conveniently. It right? does. It travels yeah? easy. Yeah. yeah. A little yeah. heavy, but it winds up being I think twenty six feet wide by maybe four Ooh. and a half feet tall. Twenty six wow. feet wide. Yeah. Nobody has a wall twenty six yeah. feet wide. Yeah. You get a wall. 26 feet wide, yeah. you know, you're usually a, a warehouse or a factory or, yeah. you, know, you know. But you can get creative. I've, I've done other pieces like this that have been year long where I did a, a, the piece on that day every single day for uh -huh. a year or so. And I did three consecutive in a row. And one collector that actually bought the piece kind of condition, actually two of them did it, um, didn't quite have the wall space, you know, and one idea we came up with was let's put a few in one room, a few in another room and a few and then I get it. And they can switch them out, you know. Oh. In another case, um, someone had a big long hallway and removed some artwork and we changed the configuration a little bit to make it fit. So it's it's flexible. Wow, wow. Okay. and and, and um. When you show Walter Macy L, these, you said this was for a residency. This so was have you, for have you showed these segment and pieces? Uh, where else have you showed those? The, these were, I mean, they were exhibited the day at the end of the residency. It was okay. kind of silly. You, know, you, you work like a, you know, for a month and then, yeah. then it's gone. Well, it's kind of like that when you're like trying to, you know, when you're pursuing love. Sometimes exactly. You get a, but then Bill Moreno curated it into a show at Oka um, the following year. Oh, okay. And so it was up the for Orange a month. County Center for Contemporary Art. Correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. And so that had a month out there. I mean, never since then it's been sitting. Oh, in that's box. great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Cool. So, so um, where else have you shown in uh, Los Angeles? You're, you're you're working with Walter. That's great. Culver City. You're on um, La Cienega. That's like you know the main drag of the art world right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you get the feeling things might be moving? Are, are people talking? Are, are they moving downtown? Or is Culver City still? Are you happy to be there? I think I'm happy to be there. Um, I mean, we all know an energy and a focus is downtown right now, which yeah. is which is great. Um, I think it is, you know, kind of maybe what New York was in the 50s and 60s. Everyone seems to be migrating to the larger spaces that you can get in New York, except you can now afford it here in LA. Yeah. I think it is. Exciting. Exciting, and I think that's great. But I think 
you know, Culver City, that area. And, and Walter's in Los Angeles. There's, you know, the misnomer. Right. La Cienega is L.A., but Washington is Culver. And it's interesting. Yeah. The border is, yeah, there's that weird little alley. Once you turn up, right. that's, that's yeah. actually the border of Culver City. Yeah. And, and but, you know, everyone refers to it as Culver yeah, City. And that's, yeah, that's Culver what City it is, you know. Scene, yeah. But I think it's, um, it's going to be there for quite a while. I don't think it's moving. Oh, oh, I, I yeah. think, yeah, it's yeah. dropped anchor. There's, yeah. there's, there's no doubt. And so, you're, you, so you're having fun showing there. Where, where else have you shown besides uh, Culver City? I've, uh, well, my last show is at the um, Craft Folk and Art Museum, a uh, show that Howard Fox curated called oh, wow. Paperworks. Wow. Um, that was, I think, October and up until January this past year. Oh, okay. Um, before that, I was with uh, Blythe Products um, in Culver City. She, Hillary Metz was in Culver City. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was a Metro Gallery in the past, um, which was on Hyperion Boulevard in Silver Lake. Oh, wow. Silver Lake. Wow. Yeah. The Silver Lake art scene was, I don't know that it ever really got. I don't think they could get yeah. it all together. You yeah. Know? Parking. Yeah. It's the parking. It's the park. And the rents went from so affordable, nobody wanted to be there too. Oh, we can't put a gallery here. It's right. just too expensive. Yeah. So. And the distance killed them too. Like there must have been three miles between some galleries. So yeah. No, no, no. You can't. Yeah. yeah. You have to be able to park once. This is LA. That's yeah. the one thing about galleries. Now, now what are we looking at here? Um, this is another piece of a series I did. I think there were 25 in this series. This was also at my show at, at Walter Maciel. Um, and the whole idea for this whole series was, and actually really the show, quite frankly, was certain ideas people have about understanding words and definitions and meanings and perceptions and um, everything else. And so I was trying to flip that on itself. And what I tried to do is create a little community of, of ideas or people, certain kind of, uh, you know, assumptions we make when we see things. And in this case, all the the figures in there are all silhouettes, so there's oh. nothing you can identify, you know, race, clothing, anything else with, but it's still unusual how people will focus on one thing that they can focus on and think it's only about that. So you see the baseball cap, and the first thing that pops into my head is the working class. Yes, absolutely. So, but yeah. but it could it could be a many, it, it could be an actual baseball team and their million, millions. It could, you know. You know? And, so. you know, and a lot of baseball hats are worn throughout Los Angeles, and people are just walking down the street and yeah, could be a work, sunny day, you know? could be a gangbanger, right? Yeah, yeah so it's, and that was the idea, was just to expand the ideas, like to pull back on your immediate assumptions about things, and you're usually fundamentally wrong about that a yeah. lot, oh, yeah. and just kind of open it up to a discourse where it could be other things than just what I think it is initially. And, and are, you, are you trying to approximate a word cloud up here? Uh, no, it just happened to be a piece of paper that looked good. <laughs> yeah, 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 it looks great. It look, but but it does have that sort of the abstract the abstraction element really comes in. Right, and you, so, you you play with that with paper. Like as these pieces get built, I respond from one to the next, and I lay down one. I have a reaction to it. I can cover it up. Like there's many many layers underneath what you see. So it is like painting in that way. And what I'll do is I'll respond to one when I put the next and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it gets covered up and you start again, you know. Can I have a question about the whole process. Do you have stacks and stacks of magazines or do you go through and like make a stack of blue and a stack of green or stacks of birds or like, how does that work? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but no, that, I mean, that's, that's really it. There, there's tons of magazines in the studio. Um, I do have catalog references. I do have certain folders where I'll, I'll find images, things that I like and I'm not using. They'll go in a folder, text will go in a folder, colors, they'll be color coordinated. You know, I have a giant, you know, kind of table on wheels that's really low to the floor, and all that is stacked in kind of, you know, color stacks too. So when I'm working on something, I go, I wish I had a, a piece of purple paper with some, you know, text on it. It's like I, I pretty much remember where it is and I can access it kind of quickly. Wow. You know, and I, I could be right, I could be wrong, but it starts me on this other chain reaction of like looking through things and finding So in a, in a weird way, it's like a tube of paint, but it's... it's uh... It really is, yeah, I think so. so you know. Can we see the next piece? Roll, roll the artwork. Oh wow! Now this, I re now was this the one at Life Project? It was, yeah, yeah. Okay, this I remember. This this was uh, hanging. Now that's been a few years now. That has. That was 2011. Wow, that's whew, time flies. Jeez. It does a bit too. So much. and this is made out of paper. Wow, and all paper chandelier. Yeah, and it was part of a larger installation. It it is. It was the chandelier came out because of the series I did. The show was called White Out but all the work was predominantly white and it was all difficult subject matter that people have um, challenges with discussing publicly or openly. So I created these kind of neutral um, 
scenes, if you will, these images that people would easily approach. And once they got close enough, they could read or find images and there was a very startling subject matter that was, nice. you know, not nice. easy. And so there was a, in an instance applied in its presentation, but I noticed that and it usually happens in a lot of um, using mass media and magazines and, and advertising and uh -huh. marketing things. There's a certain theme and tradition that goes through like every year and it changes. Could be a color, could be certain imagery. Oh yeah, like the, this spring's color is mauve. Exactly. Yeah, that, you know, that, that the elk was two yeah. years ago and elk? just, yeah, like an elk. Yeah, you Wait, saw elk, elk, elk a color? people were using it. No, it wasn't a color, but it was an image. Oh, the image of the elk was yeah. every, yes, so yes, everyone yes, was yes. You, and then it became nature and Baroque. So, and this time um, the chandelier was popping up in all these ads. Yeah. And, uh -huh. When I was taking a step back, as I usually do when I'm making work, and I, I assess, I look, I, I learn from what I'm doing. You know, I just don't blindly keep going forward. And I noticed there was a chandelier everywhere, and the, and the whole show needed a, a punch, like just a big piece that was. Oh, okay, great. You know, and I realized, let's make a chandelier, and I'm, I'm like, no, shit, what? <laughs> have you, have you noticed, have you noticed that it's like this at art fairs too? I've noticed it at art fairs where you get, um, how do I put it, like you'll see a lot of chrome or you'll see a lot, lot, a lot of neon, like one right. year at an art fair is like, wow, there's more neon here. It happens. And then you go there the next year, oh, this, is, this fair has a lot of neon and there's no neon the next year, yeah. but there is a lot of like motel signage. Right. You know what I yeah. mean? Or just these tropes, yeah. they pop up independently. Neat. Yet, yeah. Hands with eyes. Hands with eyes. Oh, oh there, fuck, yeah. man, I'm so <laughs> sick of girls with antlers, bunnies, hands with eyes and pieces of meat. I'm fucking over it. You know, there you go. I've had enough meat. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't. So, le <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let's see the next piece here. Well, but it, before we go too much further, <laughs> I want to ask you about, you're from Chicago. Even though you moved to LA, you have a loyalty to Chicago sports teams. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. So now it's uh -oh. funny because we don't really get to talk about sports in the art world, but here you are. Here you are. Here you are. It is like a sports arena if you what? think about it. It is like a sports the, arena. The art world is yes. like a sports arena. Yes. Summer yes. pitchers, I like summer that. hitters. I like Someone that. never gets an at yeah. an app. A lot of strikeouts. A lot of strikeouts. A lot of strikeouts. <laughs> yes. You know, what I like about baseball is that it is a game of failure and like a, a superstar can fail seven out of ten times. Right. You bat three hundred, you're gonna make the yeah. all-star game. Kind of right? like science. It's the same way. It's based science. on mistakes and failures, and you pay attention to that, and you learn. Crazy but the, the difference between science and um, the art world is when your mistake fails in science, it stays in the laboratory. And when you, your mistake fails in the art world, sometimes it still gets into the big art fair. That's but true. But sometimes that is a six, what you feel is a failure becomes actually a success. Uh, it can. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would like to think the critical and cur curatorial community have a say in these things. You, the artist, eh, just keep throwing that stuff out there. Uh, I, I think that's true, though, because, you know, sometimes my least favorite people, it's the first one they buy, and it's yeah. their least favorite. <laughs> but then on the other hand, if, if, you're, if you're working and you're prolific enough, you, you know, your show isn't just what I made this past year. Your show is 20 other pieces that don't quite fit in curatorial reasons in a good show. So if you can deliver a good show, you've got a plethora of other work you've been working through to deliver 12, 20, 30 mm -hmm. good pieces. You know? So, so, um, so let's, let's talk for a minute there about, um, about who's your favorite sports team? Chicago Blackhawks. Chicago Blackhawks hockey. Yes. And, um, and then uh, who's your second favorite team? Um, then I'm going with the Bears. Not and, whoever's and, playing the St. Louis Blues. <laughs> no, 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 no. Or, or, you know, on the day the Bears are beating the Packers, that's... Oh, that's, well, you, know, you can't. Yeah, the, only, those days don't come that often, No, though, they, right? don't, they don't, you know. Um, so so the, the Chicago Bears are your... your so, so it goes hockey, then football, football and then what? Um, I, I think I go basketball before I go baseball. So you go yeah. Bulls yeah. Wow. and then or Cubs or White Sox? Um, Cubs. Cubs. Yeah. Do you hate the White Sox? A lot of, um, a lot of people. I have don't a, hate. The, you know, some, a, some people as, are a, like, as a kid, the rivalry. Yeah, you know, yeah. No, no White Sox. But now I'm just like, it's know, a little more Chicago. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm good because they're know? both doing good this yeah. year. It could be, hey, uh, if, you know, if if the Dodgers you, or the Angels are good, I'm like, you know, I'm a little, I'm in LA. If the Kings were playing hockey, oh my God, look like, what they put up there. Look at that. Wow. Nice. There we go. Hey, there we go. Um. So, so I gotta, I gotta get it away for the Hawks there. Yeah. Oh, get the Hawks there. You're there. You go. Wow. So, so, uh, so, do you still go back to Chicago a lot? 
Not a lot. Not often. Do you do you go like if your teams are visiting Southern California? Do you? Oh go, yeah, I try You to go do like that. so when the when the Ducks and the Kings play the Blackhawks, you're you're wearing the Blackhawks. Yeah, jersey? I was at the the playoff game, the the longest playoff game in history. It was like two games for six periods. When, six periods when oh the Blackhawks beat the Ducks. Last, the yeah. Blackhawks beat the Ducks in six periods in Anaheim. Yeah, overtime, overtime. In the overtime. playoffs. Yeah, it was great. Wow, yeah, it was, elimination it was game. Crazy. Um, geez, that was game six, I believe. So, so I it think led. They, I think it was a seven. Yeah. And then they and then they did they win? They the won. Games? They won. They won. That so, was the, we won the Stanley Cup. Okay, so but but so that was like the ultimate game. Yeah, right? it was, it was so great. You, do, uh, do you feel like I saw the ultimate game? I know I'm a big Angels fan, and like after they won the World Series, it was almost like, oh, the next season was kind of like, you know, who cares? We won. You know, is there is there that that final? How long? Did, wait, the the Blackhawks won in two thousand. They won the Stanley Cup in last year and then the year before. And the year they, before. They but, haven't repeated, but they've skipped years. Okay, but, you know? but then before the what was the big gap? Like they hadn't won oh, since. the big the big gap, they they actually and this is a true story, they actually and I can't remember the year, I think it was um, two thousand twelve, but they won on my birthday. Wow. On June ninth, they wow. won the Stanley Cup. Wow. And I and I went back birthday. and I looked back and I think it had been 20 plus years since they had since they had, they had won they a Stanley won. Cup. And 20 was, years. Was, That's not now. Now, meanwhile, no, the Cubs was, are waiting great. over 100 years. No, exactly. And the know. Bulls since Michael Jordan. Not going to And then um, and the, the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> the Bears. I don't even have to. I don't even have to. <laughs> Is it, Dignify. See, I never got that Saturday Night Live. The skip. Bears. The, the Bears. Bulls. Yeah. I don't get it. That's, like, that's what every Chicago sports fan is like. It right? is. Like the, the THs are duh. Da, it's like it's not a bears. TH. It's, you know, so. Da so bears. that's the joke da is bulls. just how people say it. Well, is. Tim Gretkowski, thanks for being on Modern Art Blitz. Much. I thank appreciate you. it. Uh, thank thank you. you. I'm so excited to see thanks, you. Thanks thing. to uh, our. Oh, we have to see the sketch. The we sketch. The sketch. sketch. The sketch. The Here sketch. we go. From Woo. the sketcher's seat, our intern, Aliza. Yay. Tim, whoa, Tim Gretowski. Gretkowski. Thank you. Thank you very much for being on the show. Your, your name, you have a hockey player name. It's kind like of is, yeah, it fits. Yeah, yeah. Senna. Um, okay, well, thanks for being on the show. We do this every Sunday at 5, streaming on Modern Art Blitz. We're archived at YouTube and on modernartblitz.com. Thanks to everyone for this episode. We'll be back next Sunday at 5 p.m. Roll back to. Did you come here for a